আসসালামু আলাইকুম বন্ধুরা আমরা জানি ডক্টর জাকির নায়েক এই যুগের একজন অত্যন্ত জ্ঞানবান তিনি বিভিন্ন ধর্মের একজন শিক্ষার্থী হিসেবে নিজেকে প্রচার করে থাকেন তো আজকে যে প্রশ্নটি তাকে করা হয়েছে আমরা যেটা দেখতে যাচ্ছি এটি অত্যন্ত কঠিন একটি প্রশ্ন ছিল ইনি ধর্মীয় প্রতিটি উক্তি প্রতিটি কথা ধর্মীয় গ্রন্থ থেকেই তিনি তার উদাহরণ টানেন এজন্য তাকে আমার খুব ভালো লাগে এই যুগে তার মতো একজন জ্ঞানবান ব্যক্তির দরকার ছিল তো চলুন আজকে ডক্টর জাকির নায়ক প্রশ্নের কি উত্তর দিলেন সেটা আমরা দেখি চলুন শুরু করা যাক ইন দ্য ফিল্ড অফ অ্যাস্ট্রোনমি a few decades earlier in the 1970s there were a group of scientists who described how the universe came into existence for which they got the nobel prize this they called as the big bang and these scientists said that initially our universe was one primary nebula then there was a secondary separation there was a big bang which gave rise to galaxies the stars the planets the sun as well as the earth on which we live this they called as the big bang this what the scientists discovered about 40 years back is mentioned in the quran 1400 years ago in surah anbiya chapter number 21 verse number 30 which says awalam yaral ladina kafaru do not the unbelievers see anna samawati wal arda kanat ratkan fatakna huma that the heavens and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder this big bang which the scientists discovered recently is mentioned in the quran 1400 years ago Previously, we human beings, we thought that the world was flat. It was in 1577 when Sir Francis Drake sailed around the earth that he first time proved that the earth on which we live, it is spherical in shape. The Quran mentions 1400 years ago in Surah Naziyat, chapter number 79, verse number 30. Wal ardh baad azali ka dhaha. And thereafter, we have made the earth X shape. One of the meaning of dha is an expanse and the earth is an expanse. The other meaning is derived from the Arabic word dhuya which means an egg. And today we know the earth is not completely round like a ball. It is flattened from the pole. It is geospherical in shape. And if we analyze the Arabic word dhaha doesn't refer to a normal egg. It specifically refers to the egg of an ostrich. And if we analyze the egg of an ostrich is too geospherical in shape. Imagine the glorious Quran 1400 years ago says that the earth is geospherical in shape. Previously we thought that the light of the moon was its own light. Recently we have come to know that the light of the moon is not its own light but it is a reflected and borrowed light. The Quran says in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 61, Blessed is he who has placed the constellation in the sky and placed the herin, sun, a lamp having its own light and moon having borrowed or reflected light. So the Quran describes the moonlight as borrowed or reflected, which we came to know recently in science. Recently in science means 50 years back, 100 years back, 200 years back. When I was in school, I passed my school in 1982, about 29 years back. There I'd learned in science that the sun, though it revolves, it does not rotate about its own axis. But the Quran mentions in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 33. It is he who has created the night and the day. The sun and the moon. Each one traveling in orbit with its own motion. The Quran says the sun and the moon, besides revolving, it also rotates about its own axis. And today, recently, a few decades earlier, science has come to know that the sun rotates and takes about 25 days to complete one rotation which has been incorporated in most of the school textbooks throughout the world. There may be certain skeptics who will say, it's nothing great that the Quran speaks about astronomy since the Arabs were advanced in the field of astronomy. I do agree that the Arabs were advanced in the field of astronomy, but I'd like to remind them that the Arabs became advanced in the field of astronomy a few hundred years after the Quran was revealed. So it is from the Quran 
that the Arabs learned about astronomy and not the vice versa. In the field of hydrology, we learn in the school about the water cycle. How the water evaporates from the ocean, forms into clouds, moves into the interior, falls down as rain and the water bill is replenished. This was first described by Sir Bernard Palissy in the year 1580. The Quran too describes the water cycle in great detail 1400 years ago. The Quran says the water evaporates from the ocean, forms into clouds, the clouds join, they move into the interior, they fall down as rain and the water table is replenished and the water cycle is completed. The Quran speaks about the water cycle in great detail in several places. In Surah Az-Zumur, chapter number 39, verse number 21. In Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse number 24. In Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 18. In Surah Hijar, chapter number 15, verse number 22. In Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 43. In Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 57. In Surah Rod, chapter number 13, verse number 17. In Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 48 and 49. In Surah Fatir, chapter 35, verse number 9. In Surah Yasin, chapter number 36, verse number 34. In Surah Jasha, chapter number 45, verse number 5. In Surah Qaf, chapter number 50, verse number 8 and 9. In Surah Waqiyah, chapter number 56, verse number 68 to 70. In Surah Mulk, chapter 67, verse number 30. In Surah Tariq, chapter number 86, verse number 11. I can go on and on giving references only in the Quran of the several verses which speak about the water cycle in great detail. In the field of oceanography, there is a verse in the Quran, in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 53, which says that he has let two bodies of flowing water, one sweet and palatable and the other salty and bitter. Though they meet, they do not mix. There is a barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed. Previously, we human beings knew that there are two types of water, sweet and salty. But the commentator of the Quran could not understand what does God Almighty mean by saying that these two waters, when they meet, they do not mix and there is a barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed. Today, after science has advanced, we have come to know that whenever one type of water flows into the other type of water, it loses its constituents and gets homogenized into the water it flows. This today science calls as the transitional homogenizing area, which the Quran refers to as barzakh, as a barrier. And this can be seen in Cape Point, the southernmost tip of South Africa. And when we see even the color of the water between these two types of water differs. And Professor Hay, a very famous oceanologist, he said that this information came to the human knowledge recently. This book, the Quran, it's difficult to explain how does it mention 14 years ago. In the field of biology, the Quran says, in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30, that we have created every living thing from water. Will you not then believe? Imagine in the deserts of Arabia, the Quran says every living thing is made from water. Who could have believed in it? Today, after science has advanced, we have come to know that every living being, it contains cells. And the basic substance of cell is the cytoplasm, which contains about 80% water. Today, science tells us that every living creature contains 50 to 90 percent water. In the field of botany, previously we did not know that even the plants have got sexes male and female. The Quran says in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 53, that it is he who sends down water from the sky and with it brings diverse pairs of plants, each separate from the other. The Arabic word azwaj meaning pair, saying that the plants have got sexes male and female. In the field of zoology, the Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 38, it is he who has made every animal that walks on the earth and every bird that flies in the air to live in communities like the human beings. Today science agrees that even the animals and the birds live in communities like the human beings, which was not known earlier. The Quran speaks about the lifestyle of the bee in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 68 and 69. The Quran speaks about the lifestyle of the spider in Surah Ankabut, chapter number 29, verse number 41. The Quran speaks about the lifestyle and the communication of ants in Surah Namal, 
chapter number 27, verse number 17 and 18. In the field of medicine, the Quran says in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse 68 and 69, that from the belly of the bee, we give you a drink of varying colors in which there is healing for mankind. It is recently we have come to know that the honey that we have is obtained from the belly of the bee. And today science agrees that there are mild antiseptic properties in honey and it is even a healing for mankind. So, we have seen the doctor Jaakir Naikir Obasthapana. We have seen the doctor Jaakir Naikir Obasthapana. So, we have seen the doctor Jaakir Naikir Obasthapana. 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 तादेव विशेष भावे उन रोज जाना चाहिए, अमार चैनल डी सब्सक्राइब करो जन्नो, एवं लाइक कमेंट, एवं आपने शेयर करते पारे, कारण एटी शेयर करे अवश्य ही लाभ आसे, तो आस्कर मोते खानी शेष करती, अल्लाह पेस बांग्लादेश जिंदाबाद